good morning <coughs> first of all thank you for inviting me here to share my thoughts and have a little bit of discussion about a topic that passionates me uh, to start with even if this is called a saturday lecture series treat this let's treat this as a discussion it's not a lecture i am not lecturing you let's keep this as a discussion i don't know whether a q and a session question answer session is planned or not it is a at the end right okay so let's cancel that <laughs> and that means there's no separate q and a session you can ask questions raise points whenever you want at any point you can stop me don't hesitate <coughs> uh okay so having uh, th there'll be a break all of you know that so if things get heavy we'll just stop take a breathe breather and come back uh so the topic for this discussion is with the l putting the l back in nlp so uh, i hope this topic is clear like with the l with the uh, you understand with the with the is old english for where where to actually but also used as where so where is the l and then we are trying to put it back in nlp so as she said <coughs> uh, a lot of you have just heard the term nlp uh, do you know what it is just the full form natural language processing right so that's the l that we are talking about putting the l that's language perspective back in nlp and why i'll i'll uh, discuss further like people have started actually forgetting the role of l in nlp uh, which is unfortunate so having said the preliminaries there's one more important thing disclaimers what this session is not about we have two hours to talk about what this session is about but let's first get this thing clear so what this session is not about it's not a course in artificial intelligence it's not a course in machine learning deep learning it's not a course in data science or big data so any of you have come in with those expectations please keep them aside similarly i'm not going to talk about programming algorithm then statistical techniques performance optimization and so on i'm not going to talk about anything of that if anybody is interested we can take the discussion offline maybe uh but not right now so having said this so what is this session about it's about language pure language nothing but language so all of us know what language is right yes or no yeah i guess so so what is it by the way what is language yeah yeah it's a, yeah medium of communication yes but that's not enough we'll need to add something to that it's a medium of com communication all right verbal medium of communication okay because you can draw pictures and communicate something you can dance and communicate something so people say and uh, you, you can write something and communicate now written form is a form of language let's accept that because linguistically speaking written form is not really the language it's only the spoken part so let's not get into all that but this session is about language pure language and then language processing you know what language processing is yes no even if you don't know doesn't matter can you tell me what language processing is you understand the terms language and processing you now you told me what language is now what is processing yeah understanding the language yeah is that equal to processing okay interpretation 
Now, we will see the language processing systems that exist. How many of them understand language do you think? Yeah? Any? None. Yeah, human brain understands, but that is not a commercial system as yet. So, <laughs> so language processing is equal to understanding? I do not know. Processing? Any, any processing? What is processing? What is processing? You take something, work on it and give out something and this process is well processing. <laughs> so, taking input, doing something and then giving output that is simple processing. So, language processing would mean all these operations performed on language. Okay. This session is also about automatic language processing. Now, what is that? So, which processing? Okay. So, language processing some of you said understanding when, when I am uttering all these words sentences all of you say you understand right. So, what are you doing as he, as he said brain processes language. So, what does that mean? Brain takes the input through your ears when I speak and then does something we do not know what that is right now not just we. Um, well, the, the big scientists do not know it as yet either. So, that is ok. So, brain processes it does something and then gives output either to itself or to your hands. If the instruction is like pick up the pen for example, then the instruction goes out to your hand move in this direction take this object and pick it up and so on. So, the brain does the processing language processing. Now, <coughs> when we say automatic language processing, what is it? So, what, what your brain is doing is it not automatic? How, how do you know what is auto, or, or what is automatic? You don't have to take any right. So, then how do you define manual? like doing something by hand right. So, but you do not do that to your brain. So, you, you would you call that as automatic? Maybe, maybe. So, automatic language processing that is why I mean it is a question mark automatic language processing fine. So, talking in terms of computers automatic language processing by machines and th this is how we go we have not yet arrived at computers. Um, we I would have loved to have the uh, PPS playing here. So, I could play the animations, but anyway. So, ignore this you, you, you are not reading this. So, automatic language processing by machines. <coughs> so, which machines the JCB machines out there do they process language? No, your computer. So, essentially what we mean by machines is computers. Okay. So, we have some idea of what that could be automatic language processing by computers fine. So, this is what we are going to talk about in this session. So, I come back to the favorite question language. What is language we have discussed not fully a lot of terms you will encounter we will not be able to discuss them fully we just have 2 hours. If you if we were to discuss all of them in detail we would need at least 200. So, uh, that is the way we are going about it. So, language where do you encounter where do we encounter language every day where when you are talking yes only this section is uh, awake I guess the others are not. <laughs> The, we should have had a coffee break before the session and then <laughs> then the session yeah so yeah so where do you encounter language when you are talking to somebody that person is using speaking so using language you get to hear it you process it and so on okay so let's try this one minute experiment okay i'm going to watch the watch and uh, uh, for the next one minute close your eyes 
close your eyes and try thinking without language. Okay? Close your eyes, do, I do not want any other external influences on your brain. So, just close your eyes and try to think without language. So, without words essentially. Ok, we will wrap up in half a minute, fine, no problem. So, how many of you could manage it? Without language? There is only one person. Pictures. Only pictures? So, how, how can you describe? Smells. Or smells. smells? Can you think in smells? <laughs> I said think, I, don't, I did not say smell, I said think. Uh, sorry. Yeah? Yeah, right. Yet you can think without language, without any words. Be honest and tell me you did not use a single word <coughs> in this half a minute. Yes, you are saying something. Yeah, you tell me. You were doing the uh, experiment. <coughs> yeah. Thinking. I'm saying thinking. Yeah. So, no, I am I'm asking you, you be honest, <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, right. So, you the word tree, yes, then only it had meaning. So, how we, okay, <coughs> we will we will do some ex exceptions in every experiment has to have some exceptions, can not be 100 percent. Uh, successful, right? So, we have two, three exceptions, but the rest could not think without language. So, where do we encounter language? Everywhere, it is with us 24 7, except when we are speak, uh, sleeping, I do not know, I mean, <laughs> we are unable to observe, yes. Sir, babies do not know language. Yeah. I am sure they think, undoubtedly they think. Yes. Uh, yes, they think, they dream, yes. they think. But that is, I would say that is a question for uh, neuroscientists to solve rather than a linguist. <laughs> yeah, meaning yes, uh, if I get time I will talk about meaning as well. So, what do we mean by meaning? <coughs> so, yes I agree with you babies who cannot talk or who have never probably encountered language, which is very hard, very hard, but who have probably never encountered language, they do think, they sleep as I said, they dream, but I do not know whether to bring it under this uh, or which, which bag to put it in, neuroscience, linguistics, yes, okay, I thought <laughs> you had a doubt. Okay. <coughs> The next question. So, we encountered it 24 7, it is with us, it does not leave us 24 7. So, in which forms do we encounter it? Spoken, verbal, like we are doing right now, we are interacting verbally, then written form, <coughs> you read books, newspapers. So, is there? So, for processing, for language, for computers, well. Till now, you need a written, the written form of language, the text. You do have speech processing systems. So, we will talk about them later. But they essentially, you still need something written. Okay. So, language, it is there, it does not leave us. So, we, well, why do we need to process it? to extract meaning out of it. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, but why? 
I mean, what what part in it makes your life comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So for that, I mean, where's the language processing part in it? <coughs> okay. Okay. So can we paraphrase that as saying to capture or gather information? Yes. Slightly comment about what you have said. Yeah. Little earlier, you need writing. Yeah. In order to talk about Indian history shows that you don't need writing to talk about. That. Yes. Yes, I agree totally. I never said you need writing. What I said is light writing is a form of language. Strictly speaking, in linguistics, written language is not language. Okay? What we process or what we say as language is spoken, purely spoken. Now, well, um, th this is, I mean, when I teach. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <coughs> when I teach <coughs> classes, the, the, this debate takes almost two sessions. Writing, the first statement I make is writing is useless. And then there is a big uproar in the class. And how can you say that? All, all our lives we have been writing and so on. Uh, the first thing, yeah, the very first impression uh, when you start learning a language is writing. Uh, how many of you think Japanese is easy to learn? No, not at all. Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. How many of you know Marathi? I'm just making sure. So, majority. So, if if I take an example in Marathi, I should it be okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what did I just do? How can I say in Marathi? Me pani pito. Okay. Me pani pito. In Japanese, what do you say? Watashi wa mizu wo nomimasu. Okay? Mi, pani, pito. Watashi wa is mi, mizu wo, that is pani, nomimasu, pito. Okay? Easy? Okay, so coming back to his question, linguistically Japanese and Marathi have very similar syntax. It is very easy to learn Japanese if you ignore the writing. Imagine as, as uh, Dr. Vaidya said, a child, okay, not, not a one who does not speak, but a 3 or 4 year old child or 2 year old child who has not yet learnt writing or alphabet. Can they not speak? Unfortunately, in India, we have a lot of illiterate people who have never been to school. Can they not speak? Right? They still speak. They, t they still speak Japanese, uh, not Japanese. Like imagine a child in Japan, and they would, the child would still be speaking Japanese. Over here, Marathi, English, wherever. So you don't need script for for language, and you are very right in stating that. So, a Maukhika Parampara is what you were referring to. We had for so many centuries, we had knowledge being transmitted orally. The Veda, the Veda were never written. They were always Maukhika. But when you say write, write or writing or script is useless, it is with a pinch of salt, because scripts have their own advantage or uses in transfer of knowledge or transmission of knowledge spatio temporal. So, something that is written 100 years ago, you can still have it available. Something that was spoken 100 years ago, it is not available. Similarly, geographically, I am, I am speaking here, but in the, the somebody in the US is not able to hear me. But if I write it and send it by email, they are able to hear it. Now, you can, you, you will say you can record it and send it and so on. So, that discussion can go on. The point is, yes, language and script are ve two very different things. And we should learn to dissociate them. They, they have their advantages, disadvantages, but linguistically speaking, it is the spoken word that is interesting, that is language. Okay? So, this was a small detour, but 
interesting and necessary one. So why we do why do we process language? So uh, to communicate or the uh, uh, if you can paraphrase that to gather information, you you ask questions. Somebody processes the question now whether it's Google or your colleague, they process your question, process the language, and look for that information, find it out and pass it back to you either on your screen if it is Google or if it is your friend or colleague they will talk to you right. So, we need to process language, how now that is the question how do we process language and how do we process language we do not know as in we do not know it fully, how does our brain function we do not know it fully, it is still under research and the biggest of scientists are still working on it. But we try to emulate or simulate the brain in your programming and then we try to process language computationally. How <coughs> all of you know when, when you study NLP from the computing angle or programming angle you know variable declare variables you do all the uh, do while if then else loops etcetera use this method that jar and what not it is not my domain, but we process it somehow yeah. Uh, okay. So, is that all? Yeah, yeah I mean I will start answering yes. then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So, <coughs> what did I just do? I, I, I coughed <coughs> and what is the meaning out of it? Either I have cold simple, but if there is a discussion going on between somebody and if I want to interrupt I do <coughs> or <coughs> Instead of saying excuse me, there is another way you can say excuse me and then you can interrupt. So, we are processing sound in some context. Yes, exactly, but now again in this domain of linguistics such sounds are or even like there is a big uh, chaos going on in the class and the teacher does this right. This communication with sound and people process it. They, they suddenly realize that there is a teacher in the class and they sit down and so on right. In the domain of linguistics this is non-verbal communication and linguistics is interested in verbal communication that is language as we know it. I will come to that later again very briefly I, as I said 2 hours is not enough we will probably need 200 hours at least <laughs> to talk about all these. Uh, but yes, you are right, all these are forms of communication, but they do not fall under the or they fall in the bag of linguistics or language. In language uh, linguistics, we are interested in verbal communication. Okay. So, for the specific reason why I am yeah. like uh, he is working on sound of mm -hmm. so it is really not the word what we are saying. Yes. We might have some specific sounds. Yes, yes, yes. That is a very interesting. Uh, topic actually, even when I teach linguistics, <coughs> this is one topic that I, that I do take up for discussion and that is animal language versus human language. And there are quite a few similarities as well as distinctions and there are some properties that make the human language separate from animal language, uh, probably some other time. <laughs> Uh, yes, and there is one uh, since we are talking about it, um, you can also communicate with gestures, something called as body language, right. These are gestures that you communi you, you are still communicating something, people do process it. Again, it does not fall under language per se and linguistics. So, the, if there is a branch called as body linguistics, I do not know, <laughs> but uh, as per my knowledge there is linguistics and language and human language. So, probably in one of the next slides I will touch upon that again. <coughs> so, that is about language processing. Now, 
So, the third point automatic language processing by machines not just any machines, but computers. So, but this looks like too, too long a title to have for a field. So, like A L P B M, A L P B C, etcetera, etcetera. Let us just cut it short and do it as N L P. So, N L P is natural language processing as you told me right at the beginning. So, automatic by computers everything is implicit, it is packed in that N L P natural language processing. So, this sounds better probably. And by the way, we have not discussed, we, we discussed this, we discussed this, this element we have not yet discussed, the natural in NLP. So, if this natural is actually as opposed to artificial. So, natural language versus artificial language. Do you know any anybody has an idea of the diff is there a difference in the first place? Well, terminologically yes, but what can that be? Um, okay. Anything else? Yeah. Acquired as in when you learn. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So that is. Okay. I thought you were talking about artificial, like something that is acquired is artificial or natural. No, I am I am just asking. <laughs> yeah. So, naturally artificial or artificially natural language. Yes. Okay. 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 Is 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 it audible what he is saying or I'll I'll just repeat. I mean, yeah. He said languages like programming languages which are fixed set of rules are artificial and other languages we can modify they do not have fixed sets of rules. Okay. That is a loaded statement, but we will come, we'll come to it. Okay. Anything else any other views? So, uh, yes you are right programming languages for example, are artificial languages. Now, what what is artificial anything anything in around you some there is something natural and something you call as artificial. So, what is artificial and what is natural? <coughs> Not just language anything yeah. Man made which have I did not hear you properly unconventional and trained ok yeah. So, the trees the mountains rivers etcetera whatever wherever they exist. So, uh, they are would you call them as artificial or natural? They are natural. Why would not you call them as artificial? Okay, the, the, the bench or this this dais is it natural or artificial? Artificial why? It is made by somebody and you know who it is made by one when it was made right. So, you know the creator you know the well roundabout date of creation or period of creation usually made by man man made okay, that is artificial. And the trees and mountains and seas and all you do not know who made them. Now, there are various faiths about who does them, but we are not going into that that is not linguistics. So, uh, something that is man made is artificial and something that is not man made is natural is let us take this simplistic view for the moment. And there is another important aspect in that you know the creator and you know when it was created for artificial things. Okay. <coughs> so, programming languages <coughs> I am sorry I have a <coughs> bad throat today. <coughs> so, programming languages they are artificial why because you know Mr. Kernigan and Mr. Ritchie they created C. Okay, people still remember. People still know. <laughs> that, that's about my knowledge of computers. So my knowledge is stuck there. Yours has probably advanced. So Kernigan Ritchie, they sat down and created C. 
we don't know the exact date, but we don't know round about, right? <coughs> Same goes for all programming languages, right? That's one. Then, uh, how many of you have seen or watched the movie Avatar? Any anything remarkable there? Linguistically, of course, not the special effects and all. Yes. The language that is Navi, the, the name is Navi and it is an artificial language. The, the writer sat down and created that language. <coughs> Esperanto, have you heard about it? Esperanto, it is a language. I do not know whether I can write here or yeah. So, Esperanto, that is a language created by man, late uh, well 19th century, late 19th century, uh, early, early 20th century I guess, I'm not sure about the date. It was created by man, the aim was to have a global language for the world. There were, there were too many fights, world wars and everything going on. So, people said that is because we do not have a common language. We do not understand each other, etcetera, etcetera. Now, it is a different question whether you do you understand each other even when you have a common language, but <laughs> let us let's just ignore that for the moment. So, the idea was to create a world language, so that everybody could communicate with each other and there would be peace in the world. So, the, the, the intention was very noble and this was created in Europe, in Austria I guess. And uh, you have Esperanto clubs around the world, by the way there is one in Pune. Uh, in camp. So, people do gather, speak the language etcetera, but it is still artificial. Somebody sat down and created it. Okay. There are so many other languages <coughs> that are artificial. <coughs> so, in movies, in, uh, in what is that Lord of the Rings, yes. you have artificial language. So, there are so many examples of artificial languages and the languages that we speak generally they are natural languages, Hindi, Marathi, English, French, German, Hebrew, Arabic, Greek, you name them. You, nobody knows when and by whom they were created. Do you know the creator of English? No. Marathi? No, nobody knows. Yeah. Exactly, that is the point. There is no single creator. Whereas, for artificial language there is well a single or the, a group of creators, but nobody knows who created Hindi or Marathi or English or German or French, Nahuatl, Esperanto, Esperanto we know, uh, Hebrew, Hottentot. So, they are natural and as you said they evolve, yes they evolve each and every day. A language is a living thing by the way, it is born, it develops and it dies, but let us not go into all that. The point is, they are all natural languages. So, when we say natural language processing, we are interested in processing Hindi, Marathi, English, French, German, Hebrew, Arabic, etcetera, etcetera, right. So, that is the distinction between artificial and natural plus language. So, there is the point. Assumes when you say language over here, it assumes human language, not animal language, bird language. As I said, this is a topic for some other time. Very interesting discussion, but right now cannot go into that. Okay. So, we defined NLP, that is natural language processing. So, where do we encounter NLP? Now that we have set the framework, all of you know or have come across this spell checkers, grammar checkers, when you write or type a document. MS Word or any other text editing uh, software. So, you have spell checkers embedded, you have grammar checkers, you have those red lines, blue lines, whatever, right. Then you have automatic translators like Google Translate. Any other you know? Yeah. Yeah, there are many actually, exactly. So, the, the most well known is Google, but you have Bing translators in Bing everywhere. So, automatic translators. Then you have chatbots 
automatic question answering systems. Chatbots is the, it is another buzzword these days. Everybody is behind chatbots. All startups, they want to create chatbots. So, what is that? The credit goes to Turing machines and early. Yes. Right, right. So, uh, yes, everybody is happy in giving the credit as long as they get paid for it. So, <laughs> yes, ELISA and all, they, they, I mean, those experiments go back, what, 50, 60 years? It's long, it's long yeah, exactly. But every, these days, all startups, any startup you um, come across wants to create a chatbot for whatever, for health, for uh, finance, for um, call center, automation, etc., etc. So, chatbots and automatic question answering systems. Then you have virtual assistants like Siri, Alexa, Cortana, Google Assistant and so on. Again, there are a lot, lot of startups that want to build virtual assistants, automatic scheduler systems, meeting schedulers, etc., etc., etc. Then you have automatic weather reports and news articles. Do you, you probably have heard that now people have, people do not write news articles anymore, people as in humans, they are written automatically by machines. Weather reports, they are written automatically by machines, started, I do not know what the states in India, but in Canada, in China, it is all auto automated. Reporters do not write the news articles anymore, they are written by machines. Weather reports, you get the weather data from satellites and weather stations and all and just compile them and you have the weather report ready. <coughs> Driverless cars, that is another big thing that is not yet come in. I do not know when and if it will come in India, but <laughs> anyways the cars that we see are almost as driverless, but <laughs> not just cars, all vehicles. So, but I mean what is language to do with driverless car? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is not an exhaustive list. And you can go on 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 pages of all applications that have NLP. But I have just listed some that came to mind. So, driverless cars, what, what do they have to do with language? The idea is just go sit and it takes you wherever, right? How does it know where to take you? You need to, yeah, either you tell it through the app that I want to go here and etcetera. If it is not there, then you probably have to speak or tell the well absent driver that I want to go wherever to the university it takes you. So, you have come across all these. So, the point is did we know that all this had NLP like the question the plagiarism checker, you have used it. Did we know that all of that runs on NLP? or more importantly the L. Now, that is of my interest. It still <coughs> has to process language. So, it cannot forget the L in it. Okay? So, what more do we know about NLP? So, those were the applications, some of the applications that use NLP that are built on NLP etcetera. What more do we know about NLP? The first year students, maybe not the second year students, I do not know who they are, but they may try to answer. So, you have automata, finite state automata, do, do you study it anymore or no, not anymore. <laughs> okay. uh, speech processing, yes, what is it? Processes your speech, okay, let us stay with that. Statistics, now what does statistics do with NLB? Everything, these days everything. We, people have forgotten this L and so, it is all statistics. You gather what? Tons of data, process it, then churn out numbers, patterns and you say you have done. What have you done? Nobody knows. Big data and uh, analytics. So, you, you gather those terabytes, petabytes, zettabytes, what not data, do the analytics and so on. So, all that is labeled under NLP by the way. If you, if you just take a look at the job advertisements, these are the skills that are required in under NLP by the way. So, machine learning, deep learning and so on the list goes on. Do you see anywhere linguistics, knowledge of language, nowhere. Go and check job advertisements, nowhere you will see. 
hardly in a few places. So, that is my concern. People have forgotten the L in NLP. They do everything else, but NLP, the L. So, we encounter NLP. Uh, I do not know whether we can zoom this or not. No, not possible. Because I do not think, if people cannot read, then they would not be able to appreciate. Yeah, I guess we should be able to zoom, right. So, it is here. Let us do it 200 percent, ok. Oops. Where is that? Uh, how do I make the? Ok. Yeah, keep it, right. Ok. So, you, you encounter spell checkers, auto corrects and stuff like that. So, they do work at times, like over here. There is a one L missing in spelling check. So, it has captured. Then, Apka Din Mangalai. So, it has captured that there is something wrong over here and it has given you the option. But there are times when it well does not work. So, what do you want to do for lunch? I think I am going to stay home and eat a slave. I need to save money. So, since when did you become a cannibal? <laughs> oh my god, I meant slave. No, sorry, salai. I give up. You 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 find this all the time, right? The autocorrects. Grandpa bought brought bought me a corn dog from the devil. The devil? No, the daily. <laughs> so and then well. Mr. Glasbergen always has something to say about things. <laughs> Can you read this? Yeah. If not, I will blow it up some more. <laughs> I do not know whether we can read this or not, or maybe I should zoom it some more. But that is the state of, well, state of the art, I would say, in autocorrects. Okay, so next. No, no, this one. Uh, next page. Okay. Yeah. So that was uh, spell checkers and uh, autocorrects. Now grammar check. And this is yes. This I must tell you. This is the uh, latest taza. I, I was sending something to. Uh, Professor Arjun Varkar and uh, I ran the spell check and grammar check. It told me spelling and grammar check was complete. You are good to go. Do you see this? And this happened to me yesterday by the way. So, and then I corrected it and still says you are good to go. So, well that is the state. So, grammar checkers we encounter all the time. Then, what else do we have? Automatic translation, yes, this is interesting. So, as an experiment, a small experiment, I run this. The quick brown fox jumped over a lazy dog in Google Translate, and I run it in three languages. So, Hindi, Tvarit Bure Lomdi Ek Alsi Kutte Par Kud Gaya, does not make sense. Marathi. I do not know if you can read this. <laughs> and the last one is French, which is well not great either. So, and this one interesting. I read a book or I read a book. No, I did not try. I did not have the time, but yes, people have done that and that is even more hilarious actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I read a book, I read a book, I do not know. That is in written, that is ambiguous, because the pa present form and the past form are the same in written form for English. So, I read a book, I read a book, I do not know. How. Whichever way you want to take it, it goofs up here. here. Me Pustak Vatsle in Marathi, so it takes, it has taken the past form. I read a book, fine. Mene Kitab Padi in Hindi, which is still fine, it is taken, it is consistent. In French, what it does is, je lis un livre. So, over here it has taken the present tense. So, over for these two, it has taken, I read a book, 
and over here it has taken I read a book. Uh, my instructions were nothing else but this. So, it has goofed up probably. Now, based on statistics, why and how you probably know it was trained that way. Probably, it found a probability of this being a past tense and then it translated into past tense. But the point is, it is not consistent across languages. If it were to take a past tense, should take past tense all the time. And this is the third one is in my opinion a very interesting example. This was again uh, uh, based on real, real life story. Okay. Facebook, one of my Facebook friends had this celebrating Diwali, happy Diwali to you and your family. That is what you can read, right. And then Facebook proposed, should I translate it into English? Okay, first goof up. It is already in English, right? Written form, I do not care, but if you read it, happy Diwali to you, you and your family, that is English. But Facebook goofed up. It asked me whether I should translate. I said, okay, let us have some fun. So, I said, go ahead, translate. And this is with the translation, and it says automatically translated. So, it is like blame it on the computer, not me. So, nah, I do not know, I cannot read it. <laughs> So, this is an English to English translation, so to speak, done by Facebook automatically. Now, where it goofed up was why in the first place, why did it ask me, do you want to translate? It is because it was fooled by the script. It does not look like the Roman script, look something else, Cyrillic or Greek script. So, it asked me, so it assumed that the script is different, so the language has to be different. That is the association, unfortunate association that we make with script and language, which we need to dissociate. Even if the script is different, the language is still English. Now, this is a, well, this is not really a script, it is it's like a well, ornamental form of some script, but this is where they goof up. Yes, exactly. So, this is the same thing. Only thing is over here it to fail totally, it could not understand where it came from, <laughs> Greek or English or wherever. But yes, you are right. The trouble is, they ignore the language. Okay, then. So, those were spell checkers, grammar checkers, translators, then you have chatbots, automatic QA system, virtual assistants. So, um, uh, we are just running a bit behind time. So, I um, will just read it out. So, there is a chatbot and this person is making a shopping list. So, add 4 apples. Uh, I meant 4 bananas. So, the chatbot says, okay, I added to your shopping list 4 apples and 4 bananas. So, it just took that there are 4 apples and 4 bananas and it added. It did not look at the language. I meant over here actually is a negation that cancel the first one and this is the new one, ignore totally. So, the L has been ignored, then you, you must have read this, this was in the news a while ago. Facebook shuts down the robots after they invent their own language. Now, that is again another topic for discussion, uh, whether you can call that as a language, whether you, you can call that as a own their own language, we, we, which we cannot understand, whether you need to feel threatened. That is a topic for some other discussion. This one uh, it is unfortunately very small, but it is uh, I do not know one, one and a half year ago Microsoft had launched a bot called T and then it had to be shut down within 24 hours. That is because over here it starts by saying you humans are great and cool and what not and then it goes through the day and in the end I am sorry, uh, but it says I hate Nazi, I hate uh, Jews, Hitler was right, I hate Jews. So, it ended up within a matter of 24 hours, it ended up from humans are cool and super to racist, racist comments. And this is somebody who is commenting that th this, this chatbot went from this extreme to this extreme in 24 hours. So, well this person says now I am assured of the future of AI. So, we do not need to be afraid of AI anymore. So, you must have known the debate that is going on between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg 
about the AI thing. So, you do not need to be afraid, not as yet. And then again, Mr. Glass, Glass Bergen, I will just blow this up, because the, you cannot miss this. We had a scheduling conflict, so tomorrow's meeting has been moved to yesterday. So, <laughs> so well, bots. Uh, okay, then. So this was. Okay, how how do I? F five. Okay. Yeah, good. So till now we were in all this. Where do we encounter language? What is processing? Where do we process it? Where do we encounter people who say they process language, etcetera, 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 etcetera? Now is the time to get under the hood. That is, all these systems they say to do NLP. So, where is that L in NLP? Where is that role of language? Or how does this study of language or knowledge of language actually help in building these systems for NLP? So, we are getting inside or under the hood. So, we have talked about it a lot and then again. So, what we most probably do not know in all these NLP, all these applications that say that they process NLP and what not. The L is something that I doubt, that is why I put the word most probably do not know. Now, this L is concerned with language and the field of science or study that has language as a subject matter is called as linguistics. And often we see people do confusing between three concepts linguistics, computational linguistics and natural language processing. So, I will just take a brief overview of that. So, linguistics is well def theoretically defined as scientific study of language. So, as in case of any other scientific study in physics, chemistry, biology, whatever, it is a scientific study of language. So, it is based on observation, analysis, hypothesis and inferences. And those inferences are in the form of so called rules of language. So, somebody said that artificial versus natural languages, like natural languages are those that do not have any rules. Do I do not know whether you agree with that or not. When you say something, something when say you, if I say like this, is it okay? Why not? Because English dictates that I say when you say something and not something you say something say you when. It is a rule. Well, you do not you are not fined 50 rupees or whatever for not following the rule, but it is still a rule. Now, so through this study of language, observation what people speak, observation of what people speak you draw you collect data analyze the data and come up with some inferences that okay people say this so they put noun first then the verb then the then another noun etc cetera, etc cetera. so we say that english is a svo language subject verb object i drink tea so there's a subject i verb drink tea whereas marathi or japanese as we saw earlier watashi wa O chao no mimas, that is I drink, I tea drink, mi chaha pito, I tea drink. So, Marathi, Japanese are S O V kind of languages, that is subject, object, verb. So, different languages have different, well, rules or norms, whatever you want to call, <coughs> but they are there, you cannot ignore them. So, linguistics studies all that, yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. Now, that's that's a different rule system or criteria where uh, that's in syntax. You say that Marathi syntax is flexible, whereas English is a positional language. 
syntactically speaking. So, the position determines the function of the word. So, when you say uh, okay, I uh, or rather okay, John beats Paul, okay, is the sentence. Then in this sentence, so John is the subject and Paul is the object, right. If I reverse Paul beats John, okay, same say, same words, the word order is changed, everything changes. Now, Paul becomes the subject, John becomes the object, whereas in Marathi or Hindi, John Paul la Martu or Harautu, just to be less violent. So, John, John Paul la Harautu, Paul la Harautu John, Paul la John Harautu, everything means the same. Why? The syntax is flexible, but that is, that is, I mean, we can, we can go on about it. Syntactically, the roles or the functions of words are marked in them, they are, they are called as case markers. Something, if you remember something from school, vibhakti, vibhakti pratyay. So, they come there in Marathi or Hindi or Indian languages and that is, that gives the languages the flexibility to shuffle words around keeping the meaning same. <coughs> so, that is why they are not positional languages. English on the other hand is a positional language. So, the position of the word determines its function. So, we can go about that or go on and on in linguistics. The point is all this is subject matter of study for linguistics. All this different behavior of different languages, language specific rules, norms, etcetera. Okay? <coughs> and we are going to see that further. Then you have computational linguistics and natural language processing. So, C L N L P you might come across the, the word pair C L slash N L P. Well, N L P is actually the engineering part of it. So, it is like um, comparing physics and mechanical engineering. So, some, some aspects of physics, I, I do not know, I am no expert in physics, you may correct me if I am wrong, but say for example, um, thermodynamics and uh, heat engineering maybe. You, you correct me. The point is NLP is the engineering aspect of it. I hope you understand theoretical versus engineering or applied. So, computational linguistics is the theoretical part or theoretical aspect among these two. Now, with linguistics and computational linguistics, it is the looking at linguistic problems through a computational angle like how you can compute, but it still remains theoretical with respect to NLP which is purely engineering. So, now we dive inside. So, the L in NLP, where all does it matter? So, we go back to the systems that we saw earlier, the NLP systems, spell checks, grammar checks, translators etcetera. So, we will take them one by one. So, speech processing systems, you have text to speech speech to text in adobe uh, read reader you can read the page right so that's what that's a text to speech it takes your text it reads it back to you right you have speech to text no any examples <laughs> correct or a dictator uh, not dictator sorry dicta the dictation systems wherein you dictate and the system writes a memo for example or a letter. So, those are speech to text. So, they take input in the form of speech or voice and the output is text written. And then you have spoken QA, QA as in uh, question answering not quality assurance. So, question answering systems or assistance like Siri, Alexa, Cortana etcetera you talk to them right. <coughs> Siri you must have used anybody has iPhones you must have used Siri. So, they take they are all speech processing system. So, what is this L component in it? Now, all that engineering and programming aside, <coughs> all that is based on is this called as phonetics and phonology. That is the sub branch or branch of linguistics that helps all these systems 
to actually come into existence. Now, what is phonetics and phonology? It is study of sounds of language. You can study language at different levels, sounds, words, sentences, meaning etcetera, we will see all of them. So, this is the well one of the levels, phonetics, phonology which is study of sound. So, what does it do? Now, okay, again another disclaimer or warning, you will now onwards you will encounter a lot of technical terminology, technical in linguistics of course. Okay. I may not have time to discuss and explain all of them, but I would be happy to discuss it offline. As far as possible, I will still try and explain over here. So, the phonetics and the branch phonetics and phonology studies the sounds of language. So, sound production, description, classification, <coughs> consonants, vowels, how do you differentiate between consonants and vowels, then how do you describe how consonants and vowels are produced, all this is a subject matter of study for phonetics and phonology. Now, all of this, this international phonetic alphabet is a script developed to represent all the sounds in language. For example, the, the, the earlier example, I read a book or I read a book, when you write it is the same, but when you speak it is two different sounds. E, I read, so it is E, whereas I read, so it is A. So, your Roman traditional Roman script is incapable of distinguishing between these two. This international phonetic alphabet is designed by phoneticians and linguists to differentiate between these. As I said, linguistics is a scientific study wherein you cannot afford to have confusions and ambiguities, like is it read or read? is it E or A, you cannot afford to have that. So, this alphabet tries and succeeds almost to distinguish between each and every sound of human language and that is what is used to transcribe sounds for linguistic study. Um, and you know this, anybody knows where you encounter IPA, you do encounter, yes, Wikipedia, yes. It, I was looking at a more traditional <laughs> way, but yes Wikipedia, yes dictionaries. dictionaries exactly. So, in dictionaries in front of the word or right after the word you have something, something written in you do not know what Greek and Latin that is the IPA and it, if you and there is a key given elsewhere in the dictionary. If you follow that you will be able to pronounce the word exactly and that is the purpose for this IPA international phonetic alphabet. Okay. So, yes. So, then again phonemes of individual language, I do not think we have time to go into all this, but phonemes are individual sounds of individual languages. So, <coughs> all this is studied under this sounds of various languages. Then syllables, again that is important. Now, wh why is all this important for this? If your system cannot distinguish between two sounds, how can it function? At the base, it is this, and then uh, you must have heard the term ARPA bet. ARPA bet function, or uh, rather, devised on alphabet. So it's a well cross between IPA and the alphabet tradition. If if not, you can go and Google it. So that is used for mapping sounds to computer processable uh, bits of data right for speech processing systems um, again we won't have time to go into details but i'm just giving you terms so that if you are interested curious you can go and search so syllables what are syllables combinations of consonants and vowels again why are they important we speak in syllables when i say we what is that it is a syllable, it is not a word, wo well it is a word, but it is a syllable essentially at the level of sounds. It is w, the consonant w and e or the semi consonant w and e and that makes up we speak. So, s, p, e, speak, speak, we speak in syllables. The system, the speech processing system has to be able to distinguish between 
not it, it cannot distinguish or it cannot break a sound utterance in sp sp and eek. It has to know that it has to break at sp and k. Well, it is still one syllable, not two, speak. But if you say um, Esperanto, then it is Esperanto. Okay. All this is studied in linguistics, in phonetics, phonology, and right? all these systems feed on that. If this is this study does not happen, all these systems will have no existence. Prosody, tones, intonation, accentuation, now all this we do not we do it, we do not realize. Intonation, for example, where do you find it? Where do you find it? How do you know it is a question? Did I say question mark anywhere? The intonation, it is a rising intonation. Where do you see it or where do you find it? Okay, I am starting here. Where do you find it? I am going up. Did I say question mark anywhere? No, but all of you understood that it was a question and the system has to understand this. If not, how will it know whether you are asking a question to the system? So, it has to follow this intonation pattern, the punct so in writing you use the punctuation marks, the full stop, comma, semicolon, exclamation mark, question mark, etcetera, etcetera, and what not. Do you speak any of them? No. Do you say full stop anywhere? Nowhere. Or it is your intonation and tones, it is the prosody of your language that gives clue to all this. And if this study is not done, your Siri and Alexa are clueless of what you are seeing, right. Accent for example, now in, in, in our languages, well accent is it is a different phenomenon, I have listed it in French for example, the, <coughs> the last syllable of a morphological or phonological word is stressed and that is a distinctive marker for French. You need to understand that okay, this is stress. So, this is one unit, this is one unit. In Italian, for example, is the second last syllable that is stressed. How many of you say pizza? It is pizza, it is the second last syllable that has to be stressed. But if you go out and give me a pizza, people will say <laughs> accent Martin, right. But that is the way Italians speak it. But a, an Italian speech processing system needs to know all this. We, we do not care. The point is all this study has to happen first for this to exist, right. Next, <coughs> grammar checkers, information extraction, automatic translation. So, what do they feed on? Morphology, syntax, semantics. I am going to go into each of them, but I have just clubbed them together here and we will go into the details in the following slides. Oops, I press something else. Okay, yeah. So, morphology that is the study of word structure, word structure in language, how a particular word is constructed, how it is built, right. So, you can have individual words speak sam simply, then you can have a word plus word blackboard, it is made up of black and board two words coming together or you can have a word and affix combination, affix is prefix, suffix, the collective noun is affix. You can have infix, suprafix, let us not go into all that. So, internationalization, I do not know if you are able to read this, but I will read it out. The example is internationalization. Now, what is this monster of a word? It does not sound so monstrous, right, but if I break it down, If I break it down, where does it come from? Yes? National? International? Internationalize? Yes. So, you have nation. Okay. Then, then you have 
national, then you have nationalize and then you have nationalization and then you have internationalization. That is one way, but you could very well have international over here and then internationalize and then internationalization. It is a possible, there is no right or wrong about it. The point is, this is called as a base and then you attach the suffix al. Okay. Now, this becomes the base and you attach the suffix is, then this becomes the base and you attach the suffix shan and then this becomes the base and you attach the prefix inter. Right? So, all this study comes under morphology, it is how the word is constructed or built. So, it is a combination of word and affix, multiple affixes, multiple prefixes, suffixes etcetera. You can go on. It could also be a combination of affix and affix like biology. Now, over here, when you say word, it is a it is a uh, lone standing or independent word nation by itself, right. In case of biology, it is made up of bio and logy and none of them are words in their right, right. You cannot just say bio, when you say that is a uh, short form, right, abbreviation of something, but bio and then logy by itself does not exist. You have to attach it to sociology, phonology, morphology. So, logy is a study of something, bio. So, bio informatics, bio sciences, etcetera, etcetera. So, it can also be a uh, combination of affix plus affix. Now, this terminology is not exactly if, if some linguist were to see this, they would catch me by my throat right now because I am not being <laughs> technically exact with the terminology, but I am just simplifying things for this for the sake of discussion. And then there is this phenomenon called as inflection in language, which covers the verb conjugations. So, you have tenses, present tense, past tense, future tense, first person, second person, third person, singular, plural, etcetera, etcetera. You, you had all these conjugations, right? Walk, to walk, I walk, you walk, he walks, etcetera, etcetera. That is the present tense. Then you have the present continuous walking or the gerund form, then walked, the past tense, etcetera. So, all this is called as inflection, again simplistic term, but still it is the construction of this that interests morphology. Then you have noun and adjective declinations. So, man, men or hirwa in Marathi, for example, hirwa. And then pakshi, if it is plural, if it is singular, hirwa pakshi, if it is plural, hirve pakshi. So, hirwa changes to hirve or hirvya zhadavar pakshi basla hai, right. So, it becomes hirvya. So, all this is inflection, the form is getting changed, inflected, right. All this is studied in morphology. Then you have derivation, various words that new words that are created. How? So, you have compounds two independent words coming together chainsaw, chainsaw is a third word that is created or you have reduplications ding dong or <coughs> in Marathi bar bar, chat chat, zulu zulu etcetera. Then you have portmanteau again, portmanteau means a, a big suitcase or a hold all. So, it is that kind of word wherein you take two words, chop some parts and join them fictionary that is dictionary of fiction is becomes fictionary. So, you attach fiction and dictionary together or um, so I think some the example closer to you is Brangelina or Saifina right Saif and Karina Saifina Brad and Angelina Brangelina. So, probably you relate to that more than fictionary. So, <laughs> the point is all this study has to happen <coughs> for a grammar checker to know or a, a translator automatic translator to know what is being translated right. <coughs> this for example, if it does not understand <coughs> verb conjugations the case of read and read whether it is present tense past tense or what how does it translate 
how does it even check your grammar whether you are right or wrong <coughs> in in place of saying i i am walking you say i walking like the example that i showed you he been teaching he has been teaching the grammar checker clearly went wrong there <coughs> then syntax okay just to i mean if you have lost track <coughs> we are we are talking about this so we saw this morphology now we are looking at syntax where it helps so syntax that's the study of sentence structure morphology we saw it's a study of word structure or word construction now syntax is a study of sentence structure how the sentence is constructed so there you have part of speech various parts of speech like john paul john beats paul so it's a noun verb noun proper noun etc right i drink tea so it's i pronoun drink verb tea as a uh, proper uh, sorry not proper common noun okay so all this is comes under part of speech tagging so these are various techniques by the way part of speech tagging parsing there are techniques or smaller tools that are used in nlp and they are all based on this morphology and syntax study so parsing th there are two types more than two but two the most uh, what do you call a uh, used constituency and dependency so uh, I, i don't think you are able to read this F should i try to no okay are you able to read this now fruit flies like a banana <coughs> now this is a well i just found it on um, the internet so i took it that's a curious example to take but so it is divided into noun phrase verb phrase then adjective noun etc etc all this parsing has to happen now this is one way of parsing a sentence the another way is was the important word is the like then everything else is connected to this like this okay now this is an ambiguous statement by the way fruit flies like a banana what's the meaning what was the meaning a fruit flies like a banana there's some fruit that flies in the same manner as a banana flies right fruit flies like a banana no now whether it's possible or not is a different question that we don't care in linguistics right uh, that that's a different uh, study in semantics true value truth values and what not we are not going into that uh, in purely structural uh, linguistics this is possible why not or fruit flies what is fruit fly a fly is a, is an insect so fruit flies fruit fly is an insect that sits on fruit so flies is a plural of fly a fly many flies one fly many flies so fruit flies is one word not two words as we saw with chainsaw earlier or blackboard oops sorry yeah uh, you you remember that and then like a banana so like is the verb that is they adore or they appreciate banana anyway so <coughs> the point is you can now now how this sentence is passed gives it meaning now if this fruit flies if it's an adjective and noun then it becomes fruit flies that is the insects like verb banana or i'll just draw it instead of explaining here which <coughs> will be lost if i don't put it in writing so so fruit flies okay so you have okay i'm i'm not going to too many details but the point is another way of parsing this is fruit and instead of having verb like i have verb flies and then like a banana okay so the way you parse this sentence gives it meaning 
and well this actually again uh, this is another way uh, this was proposed by Lucia Tenier a French linguist uh, dependency uh, structure. So, this can again be represented something like this. The point is unless the system understands how to parse it, it is going to go wrong in processing. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It uh, identifies the main verb or rather main element, not to, it may not be verb all the time, and then <coughs> identify uh, identifies how the rest of the elements are attached to it, okay, and what are dependents on it. So, uh, over here <coughs> it has taken like as the main word or main element, and then it says flies and banana are directly dependent on like. So, flies like banana and then it, they have their own dependence like fruit and a. Uh. So, this is the interpretation of this parsing. How does it decide that this word is important? Okay. So, how does the system? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, this is done by humans. This was proposed by humans. As I said, Lucien Tenier was a French linguist who proposed this and humans did this. Now, it is a matter of research how we teach this to the system to do. Now, okay, um, it is a longer discussion, but this comes in handy. It identifies the verbs and then it says probably verbs are the roots of the, of the sentence and then it takes a verb. So, over here now this part of speech tagging is different. It's, it, it identifies flies as a verb like I have done here, but for this it needs to identify like as a verb and then based on that it identifies verb then the depend direct dependence. Um, okay. uh, has anybody gone to Stanford core NLP site? You can go and check this. It gives you the tree structure and it <coughs> rather there you can identify. Now, how does it do that? There is a lot of statistics and linguistic rules behind that. So, it is based on statistics mostly statistics and so it gets a lot of things wrong, but mm, that is the best way to do it right now. So, based on statistics, so what is the probability of this being the root? What was the probability of this being the root, with this being the verb etcetera etcetera? All this algorithm, all these algorithms are built into it. So, um, if you want we can discuss or you can go and find out, I um, will just write it Stanford core NLP that is the toolkit actually, which has a lot of these tools the part of speech tagger, the dependency parser, shallow parser, everything built into it. So, you can go and explore. Okay, the tree <coughs> is designed by humans. So, we represent it hierarchically. Language per se does not dictate anything. Are you, are you getting me? Like, we, we decide that this is the most important element in the sentence, and can then can you have some structure in which something is also on the left and also on the right? Yeah. Whichever close to whichever close which, which does not become a tree. I mean, can you have some is there is that is that natural or is it not natural? No, no, no. See the language does not dictate anything. My, my point is we have designed this to be in the form of a tree. You can have it without well you can it is just a form of representation like <coughs> you can have these days you have uh, uh, parsers that have this sentence and then like Stanford does it as well. Uh, brackets. brackets yes brackets or it just connects it this way. just another form of visualization that is it, but language per se does not dictate whether it should be a tree or what. Maybe if you are to like break down the hectopod language from arrival, mm -hmm. uh, you probably would not have a structure like this maybe. We do not know they well they have given it as a uh, script like it is written in a circular form and hexagonal form or whatever. L why not I mean I do not see why it could not be a tree like this because this is a form of visualization. 
wherein you give the importance to the core of the sentence and then you say that the other elements or you you see try to see how the other elements are attached to the core okay which this representation is independent of language so the core of the sentence depends on what the intention could be could be could be yes could be so there's no one silver bullet that's why there are more than one possibilities to um, to parse a sentence or as i said right now we have verb but it um, for example uh, he is a president in that case president is probably the root of the sentence and not is even if it's a verb so it's possible my point is this is independent of language this is just a form of visualization now whether you visualize it as a tree or as a circle or as some linear structure the the, the important thing to note is there is a hierarchical uh, structure in sentence and this is studied under syntax the structure of a sentence study of sentence structure okay and unless this is done and this is not done i mean this is not a solved problem that's why you get so many uh, mistakes in translators and grammar checkers because people are still working on it okay so this is syntax then semantics so semantics is the study of meaning remember again okay, i i'll just go back so over here we are here morphology syntax now we are looking at semantics is the study of meaning and there's the most famous sentence in linguistics uh, can you read it all okay if you are doing linguistics you cannot escape this sentence colorless green ideas sleep furiously proposed by noam chomsky the great chomsky so right is fine should i proceed or yes yes yeah so is it a sentence in english yes why do you say that why do you say that yeah why because there's a noun which is qualified by an adjective which is again qualified there's another adjective you can have multiple adjectives so there's a noun then there's a verb so it's this becomes a subject verb and then be, this becomes an adverb right and they are in correct order as, as we discussed earlier english is a positional language it dictates that certain elements need to be in certain positions and follows that right so this is a perfectly valid english sentence yes and no because it is perfectly valid syntactically but semantically there is a there are so many problems colorless and green cannot go together ideas it's an abstract entity which cannot now having color is the property of concrete entities and not abstract entities so ideas cannot go with green then sleeping is again some th some activity so to speak associated with living beings or not just humans living things or living beings and which is idea is not one of them so it cannot sleep and then furiously when you are sleeping it well it's implicit that you are calm and not furious so the point is it's wrong there's there, there are a lot of things wrong semantically if, if not syntactically even if not syntactically right so okay if so semantic studies all these problems now you have also lexical semantics like this was on the level of well a sentence but you have lexical semantics so study of meanings of words so interrelationship between words like polysemy homonymy synonymy antonymy etc you heard of these terms polysemy where one word has multiple meanings homonymy now homonymy is 
looks like one word has two meanings, but actually it is two words, two different words that look like the same word. Obviously, they have two different meanings. Example, accept. yeah, accept. Accept. And accept, accept and accept. Yeah, that is a case of confusion, accept and accept, but uh, like exactly fruit flies like a banana. So, like one now, do you say like as an adverb it has one meaning and as a verb it has one meaning wrong. There are two different words that look look the same obviously, they have two different meanings whereas, polysemy is wherein one word true word has two different meanings. Okay. Okay, let us not go too much into detail synonymy wherein multiple words have similar meaning not same technically speaking no two words can have the same meaning if he, if they have one word disappears one word is bound to disappear it may not do so overnight but maybe 50 years down the line so technically correct way of saying is similar meanings so more than one word have similar meanings they are synonyms then antonyms opposing meanings hyponym hyper hypername hierarchical structure of words Whereas, uh, wherein like fruit and banana. So, fruit is a more general term and banana, apple, orange they are more specific. So, fruit becomes a hyper name hyper and banana, apple, orange becomes a hypo name. Again I reiterate all this study has to happen in linguistics. If not any grammar checker or uh, sorry any translator automatic translator in the world if it does not acknowledge this or takes help of this is going to go wrong okay. and that is the L in NLP that people forget. So, then, then going ahead you have automatic dialogue systems, virtual assistants, natural language generation systems this is a, this a whole uh, what do you call field of research NLG. Um, so, you all of they, they need to build on morphology, syntax, semantics, pragmatics, discourse analysis. What is discourse analysis? The study of interrelationship and correct connectedness of utterances in a dialogue like when somebody says good morning, you, you cannot say I am hungry right. What do you say? You could, uh, if you say I am hungry then the person looks at you like there is something wrong. Good morning you are supposed to greet good morning or like what are you doing I am writing or something what are you doing I am going probably right, but something else uh, I do not know some some weird answer it is cold what are you doing it is cold today. What happens is even if both the sentences are correct their interrelationship or connectedness is wrong okay. that is that is how your dialogue uh, advances and that is what the system needs to learn as well. Alexa open the door for me and then Alexa turns on the fan. So, you have and then why is it difficult it has so many implicit references I have stopped eating meat. So, there is a presupposition that you were eating meat earlier and now you have stopped it right. Then there are deictic references that is pointing pointers like I you today here who is I I am hungry who is I. It is anybody who says that sentence it is not me in particular or you in particular right. It is anybody who says that sentence is I. So, that I object of I keeps on changing you again today what is today the day when you are speaking is today it can be today tomorrow day after next year it will still be today. So, capturing that today is hard here what is here or here there then there are elliptic elliptic utterances you do not speak always speak in complete sentences right. What do you what do you think of uh, this is it ok ok you do not see yes I feel this is ok you do not say this all the time right you just say ok right or you ok are you ok you do not say this you ok yeah done. So, all these are elliptic references and the system needs to understand all this right. 
pragmatics study of the unsaid a lot of times when you say something you don't really mean that you mean something else could you please pass the salt you have two possibilities one you can say yes i can and just sit there it's valid right could you please now that's a question on well it depends on how you interpret it is it a question on your ability to pass the salt then your answer yes i can you have answered the question but then it's a request to actually pick up that salt and pass it on to you then you've probably met the goal or the objective but for i mean unless that you do this study of pragmatics the system is again as i said for alexa alexa it's hot alexa should turn on the fan it can't just say yeah it is hot the it's actually a request to turn the fan on right this knowledge has to be built into the system and that's the l that you cannot forget so it's hard work why why is all this hard work it's language right you use it day in day day in day out 24/7 it's still hard due to the ambiguity there's so much ambiguity built into language that we humans find it difficult to disambiguate what about the computers you have to teach vagueness we are vague yeah i'll come around 12 so what's that around 12 12 in the morning 12 in the night it's all vague continuous evolution somebody said it evolves language evolves continuously and your study or your system has to take care of all that now okay to give the grammar checker a benefit of doubt in my earlier example he been teaching to give the benefit of doubt and not really give it a zero people do say i been doing that right probably i know again i don't know the internal algorithms and uh, how that flow is happening etc but as i said to give it a benefit of doubt it probably trained on those sentences which use i been doing he been doing you been doing etc etc and yes it's a valid utterance why not but language is evolving all the time every year oxford university press publishes a list of words that come into the dictionary and list of words that are going out of the dictionary that's the evolution of language for you new words come in new constructions come in new sounds come in how many of you say phataka or fataka 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 phala phala phanas phanas marathi used to have pho and not pho this pho is the influence of english but see it is changing instinctively more and more people are saying pho and not pho uh, recently there was i don't know uh, or some time back there was this whatsapp forward going um about um, 14th syllable uh, uh, vowel number 13 and 14 in marathi now we, we used to call it barakadi right o a e e u a a o o u m a ha now you have a and o why not you, you how many of you say bat how many of you say phai how many of you say ball and chendu chendu phai cha khel bagitla or bat ball how many of you say match or samna match bat ball have become marathi words isn't it a is now accepted or should be accepted as a marathi vowel why not ball so the point is this is evolution and it happens every day the thing is it it doesn't happen overnight it takes 50 100 200 years to happen so we don't realize it but we are living it we are doing it we are changing the language and there's nothing wrong in it there's nothing wrong it has to change and evolve else it will die okay a topic for some other discussion sometime too many such topics okay so the pain area statistics versus domain knowledge all these systems are they're built on statistics 
day in, day out, big data, analytics, and so on, tons of data, etc., etc. So, statistics is nothing but a tool that processes data and comes up with patterns and numbers, that is it, but it does not understand what it is doing. There is no domain knowledge involved. Whereas, domain knowledge, they come and the, it has rules or interpretations that come from research observation, that is data, which is fine, we do not disagree. But it has taken years of it, like hundreds years, so many centuries of work to come up with grammars of languages, Sanskrit, Marathi, well, we do not have too many for Marathi, but French, English, etcetera. So, statistics comes up with patterns and numbers, that is it, it does not understand anything. So, you need to interpret all these patterns and numbers, you need domain knowledge. And then, all the rules that are built into domain knowledge, they come out of data and observations as we said earlier. So, it is a scientific study of language. So, it is based on data and observations. So, these like they feed into each other and they should feed into each other. So, it should be a symbiotic relationship between statistics and domain knowledge. Unfortunately, it is not so or I observe more and more that this domain knowledge part is being ignored or may be forgotten. So, another debatable point is rule based system versus data driven system. These days we all we have all data driven systems. So, you have mil millions of uh, bytes of data etcetera. Then they, so, they are easier to develop, they require tons of data for training, but then they work only on training similar test data. If there is some sentence that comes out of your training set rather that is outside of your training set your system fails. <coughs> so, you get, you have to go back and retrain or you can you cannot have use the same system system that is trained on legal data, you cannot use it on medical data for example. You have to retrain everything, fine it works, but that is the hassle. Rule based system they require more time effort obviously, more resources to develop. You cannot have them in a same <coughs> You cannot develop rule based systems in the same time frame as a data driven system, but they do not require any training. The rules are there. Your grammar book for example, language grammar book, you just encode it first. You have a system, it tells you how to speak. You encode it, it teaches the system how to speak, right. Only thing is it takes time and effort and patience. It works on any test data like English, once you teach the system English word uh, sentence pattern, it does not matter whether it comes from legal domain or medical domain, it works, but it might not be easily scalable, that is the drawback. So, both systems have their advantages, disadvantages. What is important is to think of something like this, it is not actually versus, but it should be a plus. So, if you have a system that can profit from immense domain knowledge that is there and the scalability and robustness of data driven system, their iterative cooperation will make it stronger. You have you know rules, feed it with data. You have data, find out patterns etcetera, feed it to the um, uh, domain research and identify or interpret it, then feed it back as a rule. Okay. So, all these should go symbiotically. Okay. So, well that is actually the conclusion, it should not be a versus, it should be a plus, that is the end. Thank you.